This week, Drew and I interview Mike Bellity, founder of MLB Cigar Ventures. Mike believes the premium hand-rolled cigar industry is one of the very few remaining industries that has stayed true to the original time-tested techniques used since when cigars were first rolled. The history, craftsmanship, and quality associated with making truly awesome cigars remain unchanged through generations. The cigar lifestyle is filled with these traditions, and today we are certainly going to talk about some of them and probably a little bit of what's going on in this crazy world of ours as we're working from home. Mike Cigars will always pay homage to the deeply entrenched tradition and history that they carry. Quality will never be a question when you smoke a cigar from MLB Cigar Ventures. Any cigar under his supervision will always be developed by legends. Visit MLBCigarVentures.com to find out more. Stogie Geeks, episode 326, starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, aka Joe Hollywood, is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 326. I'm your host, Joe Hosempa. Today, Drew and I get to interview Mike Bellity of MLB Cigar Ventures, we're catching up. Um, I always get truly n- nostalgic when I speak to Mike. Um, it's it's a privilege and an honor to always uh, have him on the other end and be able to interview him and get his perspectives. And later on in the show, we are gonna talk about the stick of the week and this week's stick is the Presencia Reserva Original Cortez. So you wanna stay tuned for that. But before we introduce Mike, how's my little brown haired kid from Texas doing? What's up, brother? What are you well, doing? I'm growing a tumbleweed on top of my head, and I need to get <laughs> this baby cut. So I got, uh, man, haircuts. I actually shaved the beard uh, a week ago, a week and a half ago, just because it was just getting kind of crazy itchy, and I couldn't get the thing lined up very well. So the way that went, um, but I'm already growing it back since uh, they're telling us we're going to be able to get out and about here in about a couple weeks. Uh, yeah to resume, you know, somewhat of a normal uh, life as we knew it before COVID-19 struck us pretty hard. Uh, But other than that, man, doing well. And I'm looking forward uh, to uh, hearing you and Mike go back and forth about the past, the present, the future, and all these Mm. things are coming up on this interview. That's a great, that's a great segue. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, My uh, stay at home problems, right? Drew, in regards to your hair, just throw some pomade with it, man, and let it go high. <laughs> higher the, the the higher the hair, the closer to God, kid. You know what I mean? So right. <laughs> that's my advice to you. And now it is my privilege and honor to introduce Mike Bellity to the Stogie Geeks. How are you? What's happening, Jojo? Hey Drew, how are you? Very well, Mike. Uh Mike. I've I, never met Drew, uh, but this is so this is a new new thing for me. Joe, I, I you and I go back a ways, but Joe, uh, Drew, <laughs> this is new. I met a new friend today. Yeah, yeah, when you come out to Texas, we'll definitely get together when you're out here the next time you're out. I gotta I gotta get together with you and have a couple of drinks and of course some stogies. Drew and I was just out there in early Mar- March fourteenth. I had an event in uh Fort Worth. Yeah, you well, you were at Underground, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's that. Mike's home away from home over there in Texas. For it sure. really kind of is. I mean, 
<laughs> I, 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 I've gone for you, Stogie Geeks that are listening and watching. I have Mike and I have gone back. Mike has actually um, one of my beginning sponsors that led me into Cigar Club Radio, which raised enough, uh, I guess, awareness from Paul Azadorian um, to uh, at least get a shot here at Stogie Geeks. And uh, MLB Cigar Ventures was uh, one, was my original sponsor. Um, it was uh, Mike Bellady from MLB, and it was uh, Brian LeBeau from Churchill's Smoke Shop and Lounge here in the <coughs> Providence Metro, and um, Sean Bell from Quarry Brothers. And those were my first three sponsors that I got. So uh, always, uh, ironically, Mike, uh, probably about like three or four weeks ago on Facebook, it was like an anniversary from like six years ago from when that started and I tagged you in it and, and said thank you and all of that stuff. I can't believe it's yeah, been that Yeah, you did. Long. That was very nice. You know, and then throughout these six years, uh, I just want to say, like, like honestly, like, like absolutely positively, thank you for taking a shot. I know it was like, yeah, I'm starting this radio show here in the Providence Metro and and, you know, like, what's the audience? I'm like, I don't know, like three people or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I mean, you I, know can, I, I can yell out my window and reach more. No, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and, and then it built up momentum and, and then it went there and, it did. and, you know, and, and, and also at that same time, you were getting more active, uh, here in the Northeast and, and you were starting to build that brand of MLB cigar ventures, uh, there and, 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 you know, just watching, you grow and then you know watching the line grow and 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 all of that stuff it's just it's just been a super cool story and i remember locally you coming here to the to the province metro and and talking about this crazy shop down in texas called the underground and it was funny because there's not um, there's nothing like it i'm sure right and 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 with Drew being a co-host of Stogie Geeks, I'm like, do you live near Underground? Like, you know, because I've haven't, I haven't been to Texas, and I don't he's know. He's like the... 15 minutes from there, or so right? That's correct. Yep. You know, and he's like, oh, you go yeah. there, right, Drew? Yeah, I've been there. I've been there for a few events with the uh, Cigar for Warriors with uh, Ben Storm, and uh, sure, uh, been down there with a couple of couple of uh, cigar uh, happenings with Rojas and all them guys. So yeah, yeah, sure. Nice place, nice hole in the wall. I love it. I mean, it's just I like the veterans to go there. I like uh, everybody there is very hospitable. I mean, the hospitality there is just tremendous. Listen, it's the only cigar shop. I've gone to a, a lot of cigar shops. It's the only cigar shop I know of that's surrounded by fence and razor wire. That you got to love it. I, <laughs> I was going there. I was saying I, I remember you giving the intro, and I'm like, this place sounds like a like a destination place. I got to get you know, I got to get myself down there. I am. And do have plans to go visit Drew and to parade around Texas and have him show me and my family around and all of that stuff. Uh, that's one of our trips that we were scheduled to take in 2020. I'm hoping that can still happen. So I will be at the underground. Yeah, it's, at some it's point. awesome. We're yeah. ready for Joe. We're ready for Joe Zimpa in Texas. Yeah. Be careful what you ask for, Drew. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, it, just be careful what you ask for. <laughs> sometimes you just need a break from Joe. Sometimes I don't know. I, I find that with 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 some people in my life, you know. But Mike, want <laughs> want to talk about MLB uh, Cigar Ventures? Yeah, you, yeah, you've you've done a bunch of stuff. Why don't you bring the story geeks up to up to date as to like kind of like like not really how you got started, but like the story of what you were trying to do and the type of brands and blends that you're trying to create so that the Stogie Geeks can kind of uh, call around and try to get some of these sticks in their hands. Yeah, so um, I sort of got into the cigar industry by accident back in 2011. Um, my background's in investment management um, and and the, the finance industry, and um, I still have my, I'm still involved to some degree there, but but as well, uh, um, I've never totally left that uh, that industry. But um, you know, I, I've I've uh, I got to know uh, some folks in the industry because I was an avid cigar smoker. Uh, I got to know a lot of the the cigar makers, the bigger names in the industry, and and one of the families I became friendly with was the Tiant family, Louis Tiant um, and his son, uh, who, who had a cigar company called El Tiante Cigars. Uh, I got involved with them and, and basically owned half that company. We reblended the cigars with Don Pepin Garcia at My Father's Cigars, released two blends. They were going exceptionally well. 
And as with a lot of partnerships, that partnership didn't work out. Uh, so I decided to um, start my own company in 2013. Um, and the reason I did that really is simple. <clears throat> By the time we got to 2013, I had enough relationships with enough retailers, certainly in the New England area, so that it just made sense for me to come out with a cigar. I knew I could get it into a lot of stores in New England and, and it would get some traction. So I uh, started my own company, blended a, a, a cigar called Imperia. Uh, that's the one for those of you that know my cigars that has the sort of aqua blue label <clears throat> and band on it. And um, uh, I did that with Manuel Quesada, who's another legend in the industry, um, and released that in 2014. Uh, only really distributed it at the time in the New England area. And then in 2015, I went to the trade show that the, what was then called IPCPR is now called the PCA. And in, in 2015, I went to New Orleans where they had the trade show. And I went there really to more or less get my name out there again nationally and also to meet some sales reps <clears throat> and try to get some sales reps around the country that might be willing to sell my, my line of cigars. I was able to get a, a, a couple of reps to join my team. And uh, one was in the Southeast. And I started to get a lot of traction in Atlanta uh, and uh, Tennessee and other parts of the Southeast. Uh, and then from there, I decided to go to Texas and I started to get some traction there. Uh, and then I just kind of went nationwide at that point. Um, I now have five blends of cigars. Three are under the Imperia uh, um, uh, uh, brand, and those are all made at Quesada. And then I have two that are under the David P. Ehrlich brand name. And those are both, both of those blends are made with Ernesto Perez Carrillo. So I've been really fortunate um, to, you know, for a guy that was never in the industry, didn't have any experience, you know, a, a gringo from Wall Street got into the industry and made cigars with three of the inaugural members of the Cigar Aficionado Hall of Fame. You know, Don Pepin Garcia first and Manuel Quesada and Ernesto Perez Carrillo are all in the uh, CA Hall of Fame. Uh, and they're all legends. So I've been able to learn a lot from all of them. Uh, and they all do things similarly in a lot of respects, but they have their own little um, nuances about how they, they cure their tobacco differently or they, they have different philosophies on how to blend cigars. And I've been able to take all of that and really grow personally as a better cigar blender because of it. And, and I owe it all to them. Mm. That, that's, uh, that's super cool. And, and, and uh, you know, Socially, you're an you're an awesome guy to 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 pitch some business ideas off of uh, as well, especially being a Wall Street guy, uh, you know. And I remember starting, uh, I guess you could say starting in this industry, meaning you know trying to go out there and solicit radio sponsors and doing that there, and mm -hmm. and 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 just you know um, kind of you know just kind of watching you and then watching the brand grow, and then you know when you started traveling elsewhere and then doing that, it was super cool. Um, you know, right. uh, you know, fast forward now, I mean, you know, well, obviously being on Stogie Geeks, listeners love to uh, kind of find out, like, you know, uh, post this COVID-19, which I'm sure that we're going to we are certainly going to talk about today. I mean, you can't not sure. working from home. Right. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, like what's what's the future entail? Like you, you got some 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 f uh, future blends coming up. Uh, are you kind of laying low a little bit and and. And and has COVID kind of changed your uh, goals for 2020? Because there's a lot of industry that is either saying, well, this is time for us to come back and get creative as we can work from home on different projects or whatever. Or some of them are just still trying to secure cabin pressure and 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 get get through this. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I. So the, the, as far as the future holds, I'm always working on new things. I haven't released a new cigar since 2018. 18. Mm -hmm. uh, that was when I did the PLM series. So it's been two years. Um, I, I'm smoking right now actually a test blend uh, that I've had for a while. It's actually a, a, a blend that I still need to do some work on. Um, but uh, this one was done with Agonorsa. Uh, and I've done a few other sort of small projects with Agonorsa so far, and I'm working on some bigger things with them. Um, and uh, so I, I will continue to innovate and bring out new cigars. I hope to have uh, a new line of cigars out at some point this year. The reality of, of the situation, though, is um, the you know with COVID-19 and, and basically what has become a worldwide shutdown uh, from an economic standpoint, 
Um, it's it's really hard to gauge what that's going to mean for these retailers on the other side of it, right? Uh, mm. No doubt that a bunch of them aren't going to make it, and that's sad. There's no doubt that the ones that make it, a lot of those are going to be strapped cash-wise. Uh, and then there's only going to be a small group of these retailers that have significant uh, deep pockets by which to get their business really rolling again. Um, but most of these retailers around the country are really just mom and pop shops. You know, they're not, it's, these aren't rich people. Uh, they don't have deep pockets. They, it's, it's how they support their family. And, uh, and, and, you know, this shutdown has really hurt them big time. So it's hard to say whether it's going to be an appropriate time to actually do something really big on a big scale, uh, because I'm not sure that there's the deep pockets out there to support a lot of that. That being said, um, when we're on the other side of this thing, and I've reached out to a bunch of my retailers, and, and I, I think that most of them know this intuitively about me anyways, I will do anything I can to help them out. Uh, and I don't really know what that means yet. So, so it, we, you know, and it might mean something different for each retailer. If that means that I've got to um, get them product at a deeply discounted price, that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. If, it means I've gotta, if it means I've got to give them longer terms by which to pay me, that's what I'm going to do. Because uh, in times like this, we have to do everything we can to support the folks that support us. And without B&M retailers, without brick and mortar retailers, without those mom and pop shops, the industry legitimately dies uh, mm-hmm. because they're the, they're the lifeblood. They're the foundation of the industry. Nobody starts smoking cigars by going online and ordering cigars. doesn't mm-hmm. happen like that. It's, a, it's more of a community thing. You walk into a place... Uh, like an underground or like a, a Churchill's Lounge or like a um, White Ash or Boulevard. or you, I'm just randomly, you know, Stogies in Houston. You walk into these places and you, you, you make connections with people uh, or somebody that you know is an avid cigar smoker. They say, hey, why don't we go have a cigar? And you go there and you try it. You fall in love with the, with the community and, and, and the lifestyle. And then you become smoking cigars. If we lose that, then we lose the industry. We can't lose that. Yeah, I, I agree. And and <clears throat> you, you're gonna with 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 COVID and where the businesses are going. It's like you're kind of stuck in the middle, right? You have a creative process. You have a product. It'll mm-hmm. have a label on it. You have costs associated with that. There's a profit margin. You know, there there there's different business line items that you have to go through. But yet, without the brick and mortars who want to bring in the product there. It's like, it's like you kind of, it's like everything from a global standpoint is just stopped. And when that happens, you know, uh, time, time still ticks, right? So it could be Mm -hmm. a year or two or three, right? I'm being very pessimistic when I say three, but it could really be like the rest of 2020, before we start seeing a creative process, and that's going to affect obviously conferences that are on that were on your schedule that you've already missed, mm-hmm. or or different cigar events that now can't do more than 10, 15 people as they even raise restrictions through phase one, right? right? You know, so it's not like okay, uh, every, you know, May something or other, every town's going to go back to a phase one, two, and three, but in phase one and right. two. We're still talking people under 20 crowds of 20, which that doesn't yeah. really do it for you, right? It doesn't do it for the retailer, and it certainly doesn't do it for no. the retailer, whether it's MLB Cigar Ventures or any other blend. It's just, it's just, it's just, it just that there's no easement. And when I look okay. at the when can we get back to the trust factor of having 70 people in a room smoking cigars, enjoying a debut of a product that could very well be spring of next year, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I I mean, look, I I have some pretty definite opinions about, about how we've reacted to COVID-19, but but, uh, we don't have to get into it. I mean, 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 it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, so it's, it, there's a difference between when we should feel comfortable with it and when the government's going to allow us to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, so, I think I think we're a long way off from being able to go back to life as usual as it was pre COVID-19. I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Mm-hmm. I think we'll start to open things up. We'll be able to have small gatherings. But if you think that in um, 
you know, that the opening weekend of the NFL season is going to have 68,000 people sitting shoulder to shoulder in a stadium, you're wrong. It's not going to happen. It's not happening. Uh, If you think that if the NBA decides to play through the summer and finish their season, they're going to have sellout crowds during the playoffs, you're wrong. It's not going to happen. They're not doing it. Um, Even if they think that they can, they're not going to do it for a while because they're going to be worried about the liability, the legal ramifications if something happens to somebody. Imagine if you're at Gillette Stadium and watching the Patriots play the Giants and and they allow 68,000 people there. And, uh, you know, and you, someone catches COVID and dies, there's going to, you're talking a major lawsuit. I mean, it's, it's, so it's not happening. It's just not happening. Um, I think that what we're doing right now, you know, with all of us sitting, um, in, 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 in a confined area with no one around us, I'm at my house in my cigar room. I see Drew was at his, in his backyard, I think. And Joe, I don't know where you're at. But uh, you're somewhere, and and there's no one around us, right? But this right. this medium, this 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 uh, this Zoom and other WebEx and you know Google Hangouts and all of these different services that allow us to do this are not going away. Mm-hmm. I think mean, business businesses have forever transformed to be able to allow uh, conferences. Conference rooms are going to be a thing of the past in a lot of ways in offices. Mm-hmm. This is going to be the conference room. There's also a lot of a lot of uh, um, uh, businesses that have four or five floors in a high-rise building in downtown Boston that had, may have just determined because they were forced to use teleconferencing like this. They've 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 been they've been able to learn, um, forced to learn that it actually works pretty well. And now mm-hmm. they don't need four or five floors; they can get away with two floors, and they can tell everyone else you work from home. Right. So I think all of that's going to happen. I think that, and I don't think it's going away. I see an opportunity in the cigar industry by using these types of, uh, of video conferencing services, whether it be Zoom, WebEx, Google Hangouts, whatever, um, to do even actually more events, just not in person. Um, mm-hmm. I've been on several just sort of random herfs that various cigar shops have organized. Um, I think there will be one tonight that I'm going to try to get on because it's one, it's one of my favorite places to go in Washington state and they've been hit pretty hard out there. Uh, so I'm, I'm probably going to go on and go on that if they do it tonight. Um, and, and, you know, I've been on probably 30 of these since this Mm -hmm. thing has happened and they're actually pretty awesome. They're actually really awesome. In fact, in fact, uh, I think that the, the customers of the stores love them. So I can see a scenario whereby a, co- a store like a Churchill's Lounge in East Providence decides, you know, we can't get Skip Martin here from Roma Craft, but maybe he can, maybe he can go on a Zoom meeting, interact with our customers virtually. We'll do an event order. We'll run promotions. He'll send us the swag, and we can even do. We could actually, I could be doing, you know, an event in uh, Tacoma, Washington tonight, and then, and then tomorrow I could be doing an event in Boston, Massachusetts, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I you, because I'm just doing it like this, so I think there's an opportunity here to utilize this to our advantage going forward, so we can actually reach our customers, reach the smokers a lot more frequently. And I can tell you, with whether or not that happens, where stores do events, there's zero doubt in my mind that I'm going to be running sort of virtual hearths, you know, where I organize them and invite people to come in and do a Zoom meeting like this and get a hundred people on a zoom conference and, and just hang out, talk, smoke cigars. And it's almost like a big event. And it, I think it opens up a tremendous opportunity in terms of brand building as well. Mm-hmm. I a hundred percent agree with the creativity factor has to rise, right? Because we're, we're all forced to uh, do that. Uh, <clears throat> I've been, mm-hmm. I've been doing this type of teleconferencing work since uh, 2017. So uh, working with my day job over at Security Weekly, I've been doing this. So this is kind of business as usual uh, there. I've been saying that the cigar industry on Stogie Geeks, I've been saying cigar industry needs some sort of creativity other than buy three, <laughs> get one and complain about the FDA. Right. I've been I've been saying right. so th- this is a great creativity factor. Um, interesting to what the uh, effects would be from the podcast standpoint, right? So now like, 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 like how, how, how a podcast now going to differentiate themselves from a virtual herf or an interview such as Stogie Geeks or another cigar podcast versus, mm-hmm. uh, that there. But 
it, it's also allowing people to engage in a more creative process to discuss business. And I also think that, I don't know, when you're not at an event and not that events are boring, some of them can be lively and fun and we're drinking and being with friends and all of that stuff. But this, it's, it's kind of like a different business mindset as well. Like you said, you know, if you're going to do a virtual hearth, now you have a chance to, to speak to a group versus if you were in a room of 100 people or so, you don't get a chance to go and, 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 and talk to someone or kind of get your message out there. So I think it's super cool. Yeah, I think I, I, I've loved it, actually. I'm telling you, I, I've been on a million of them and I was on one last night till you know, too late and had too many drinks. <laughs> but but uh it happens. I mean, I'm at my house. I'm not driving anywhere. But uh, so, you know, I was on one last night and um, they're, they're really awesome. I mean, I, 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 you, you really get to connect with cigar smokers that you may nev- have never met before, because the one time you're doing an event at their store of choice, they can't make it. Yep. Right. But so it gives if I can get on when even when I'm on the road, imagine if I'm traveling and I'm at the underground doing an event, I can on a, on a, on a night that I'm not doing an event, I can log in you know, and organize a quick hearth and get 20 people in a room, 30 people, 50 people, however many join Mm -hmm. and interact and brand build directly with customers, you know, run a contest, give away some swag. You know, there's a lot of creative things we can do that uh, will allow us to have more touches with our, with our customers, which is, that's what business is all about. In my opinion, when you're, when you're in the business of sales and let's be honest, that's what the scar industry is. You know, we, we, we need to connect with our customers and the more we can connect with them, the more often we can, the better our product will do with the end user and it will drive, drive sales through the, the retailers. Yep, absolutely. Plus, you know, if, if they, they get a chance to have a one-on-one with you, even though there's other people in the room, but, you know, they might not have had that opportunity right. uh, if, if they were in a social setting. As well, I think the exactly. podcast, I think the podcast or, or the video blogs or however you want to categorize us, I think now we need to up our creativity factor and keep our listeners engaged because now th- something like this here has become the norm. I mean, I've gotten invited to a bunch of virtual hearths and 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 I've been to some, you know, and and I can't be get to all of them, you know, I got to work, right, you know, but some people. <laughs> Uh, you know, so, some people, um, you know, have it, it depends on where they are in, 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 in their hunker down phase or what their social life mm-hmm. looks like and stuff like that. But from your perspective, yeah, because now you can be in multiple places at once for sure. I, I think exactly it's, it's right. going to be, yeah, it's going to be a great creative, uh, uh, creative process to see that ongoing even post COVID-19. I said a couple of weeks ago when we started these discussions, um, you know, about like what, what we're going to do. It's like, like COVID-19, like it's kind of going to remind me of like 9-11 and we're still dealing with the TSA. And what I mean by that is like, like 19 years, what are we, 19 years late? No, yeah, nine, almost 19 years later, we're still dealing with TSA, which has come out of that era. And so 10 years later, this could be the new norm for the, for, for the industry and then whatever other technology takes place. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I don't think, I don't think that, um, in on-site events are going away, right? I, I just don't see it. I think that they're going to they'll be here to stay. That being said, this really gives us an opportunity to 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 do more. We can do the same mm-hmm. number of on-site events that we normally do, but then also do these virtual events, if you will, uh, in a in addition to that. So I, from that standpoint, I think it can be a very efficient use of and creative use of time uh, and allow us to touch more people. And, and there's also, I mean, let's be honest, it costs a lot of money for me to travel, right? So I got, I, I have, a, I, I know roughly that it costs me between three and four hundred dollars a day when I'm on the road. That's my cost. That includes when you add in the flights, the hotels, the food, beverages, you know, whatever. It's three to four hundred bucks a day, depending on where I'm traveling. That's what it ends up being. So if that's the case, um, you know, in order for me to go and to travel somewhere, I need some, I need support from the retailers. They have to pay for enough of my scar. They have to place a large enough event order for it to make sense for me to travel. Right. There are retailers that I, that I really love, but I can't give them an event because they're, they're just not big enough for me to take a, a, a day and go to that retailer. Um, so 
so this is a way I could support them as well, right? And so it doesn't cost me anything to set up a Zoom meeting. So now the buy-in could be a little bit, it could be less, right? So mm-hmm. I, can, I can actually reach retailers that I may never have been able to do an event at before uh, that I can do now because the cost of doing this is nothing. Gotcha. Right? So versus four hundred dollars a day to travel, right? Um, so, so it actually allows us to support better, the, you know, the small and medium sized uh, accounts that can't put in the event order to get us to show up in person. Um, because, and, and I'd like to visit all my stores, but at, at the end of the day, it's a it, it's a business, right? I mean, I I only have so many days in a year. I only have so many days in a year that I can do events. So I have to do those events at the retailers that have earned those events, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, so, yeah. it, but I can do these for anybody and I can support them and I can be creative. And then maybe they become one of those larger retailers because they see how the, how I interact with their customers and build relationships. And then they, then all of a sudden now they're one of the top retailers and I can go out and do an event for them. Mm, absolutely. Drew, you have a question? No, what I was gonna, what I was gonna. Uh, you always say no, and then you have a question. I love it. No, no, anyway. I don't have a question. What I was gonna add, what I was gonna add to what Mike was just saying was that, you know, I talk to my local guys around here. You know, I have my home uh, cigar lounge over here, and then I have Mike's, I have Mike cigars. Uh, I have quite a few cigar lounges around me, and I've told them, I said, you know, just speaking to them one on one, I said, what would do you guys some, some good uh, marketing is just you know, d- uh, develop a channel, you know, whether it be on YouTube, Facebook, for your cigar lounge, you know, develop a channel for yourself. Talk about a cigar you have that that just reached your your uh, brick and mortar shop and talk about it, you know, and, and maybe have a guest on via Zoom or Skype with one of your members, you know, your lounge members and just talk about the cigar in itself and just have that uh, camaraderie still with all the masses that are out there who are tuning into your channel. I think that'd be a great you know, uh, asset for them going forward. That was my end to this conversation. Nice. There you go. I agree. Mike, what? Yes, sir. I have a question. I, I, I've never asked you this, um, there and oh boy and and no it's it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's uh, is, is I, I this have, a question you've never asked me i can't even imagine what's about to happen <laughs> no no it's not no it's it's i don't know like like you you look at cigars and as a business right i look at i look at story geeks and and it's a business it's 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 got it's 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 goal it's got its purpose it's got its mm-hmm. audience it's got its sponsors it's doing this thing okay um what, but like at the end of the day, Drew and I have to get up on a Friday and do Stogie Geeks and doing that there. And and so I guess I, I, I guess my question is like, what kind of like, like, I'm just going to come out and say it like what, what kind of romances your decision to want to push yourself to produce another blend or, or to, 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 to continue with MLB and fly and travel and all of that stuff. Like what, what's the, what's the kind of romantic desire behind that? Um, there, you know, cause you, you, you know, you have to do motivate, you have to be motivated in business, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and you have to enjoy your, your, your product. I love being the host of story geeks. I, I love story geeks. I love the idea that of, of our interviews. I, I love, I love the candidness of our interviews, you know, and that, and that's kind of like been our style over the past couple of years here. It's like, like, and, but, but, but like, I, I can answer that question for me, like why I like it and where I'm going, but, or where Drew and I are going, but like, what about you? Like what, 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 what kind of like wake, wait, you wake up and when you do MLB Scar Ventures stuff, like what really makes you and drives you to kind of move on because in these times you could easily say you know something i'm not going to make a cigar for two years and just you know ride the wave take orders do what i gotta do have my sales reps on the road and kind of see where it goes but it doesn't sound like you're, you're like me you're not gonna sit on your hands and just take it you know yeah right i mean I, I look i think there's an old there's an old saying that that about the cigar industry that says if you want to leave the cigar industry a millionaire you have to start a multi-millionaire right <laughs> um so, so you don't you don't get into the industry starting a boutique cigar company now uh, 
because you think you're going to become rich from it. That's not, that's not what it is. It's, it's, that doesn't mean you can't become rich from it. It just means it's very unlikely and it's very difficult and it's a long road. Um, even folks that have um, made it in the cigar industry, if you think about um, some of the more successful cigar companies, the Rocky Patels uh, of the world, uh, Drew Estates, uh, they, they started in the 90s during a boom. But they also, um, like Rocky had, was a very successful entertainment lawyer before. So he, he went in with, with um, I, I mean, I don't, want, I don't know how much money he had, but I'm assuming he had a lot of money. Uh, uh, you have, um, you know, Christoph, uh, Glenn case was in the finance industry. I'm sure he went in and he wasn't, he wasn't worried about his next meal. I mean, he, he had, he had backing financial backing to go in and ride out the first three, four, five years to get to the point where you can have enough market share to make it worthwhile. Right. Um, but so you don't get into this industry because you want to get rich. Uh, you get into, into this industry because you love the industry because you love uh, the, the, um, the, the lifestyle of smoking cigars and the camaraderie, and uh, you love uh, um, creating. And so that's why I got in the industry initially, is I got in because I had an opportunity to take over half of a company that was already in the industry, very small at the time, uh, and I did that. Uh, and I did it because I love cigars and I love the lifestyle. And I was member, a member at Cigar Masters and at uh, Churchill's Lounge in Boston. And I, I had several you know, cigar lockers all over the place. And uh, I truly in, enjoyed it. Uh, when, I, when I had free time on my hands, I would always go to a cigar lounge, right? Uh, then I got into the industry and I, I fell in love with the process of actually creating a new blend. And, I, and then uh, I've always been a sort of a serial op- entrepreneur. Uh, and, you know, MLB Cigars is not the only business I'm involved in. I've got um, plenty of other businesses that I'm involved in um, as an investor and or um, as a consultant uh, or both. And so so I, I have uh, I've always loved building businesses and building things. Uh, and that maybe that's my Wall Street mindset is that, you know, we are, it's all about, you know, reaching goals, running businesses efficiently things like that. And so that, I think that's helped me along the way. Uh, what drives me now is, um, you know, I, I still, I, I love, I love the industry. Um, but again, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not, a, it's not, it's a labor of love. It's not a labor. It's not a job you, you want to take because you're going to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's similar. It's similar to my take. Like I, 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 I absolutely find the process of rolling the cigars or, um, you know, the, they're in a factory and the creative process and there, but I also like a lifestyle, you know, you get to go down to a lounge and hang out and meet some friends. And I mean, you have friends, really friends for life. I mean, you know, and, and, and it's just a, it's just an ongoing, um, uh, series of events that keeps pulling me back and has me say, has me say like, Oh, wow. Like, you know, like, it's just so super cool, you know, and, and, and yeah. I love, I love when a new company comes out and they're, they're creative and I love to hear their marketing story and, 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 and the meanings behind the labels and all of that stuff. And, and, and it just, it just, you, it really is a labor of love, you know, it, you really hit the nail yeah, on no the head. Doubt. And, and, yeah. and, and another piece of that is, uh, you know, you, if I had a dollar for everybody that told me that you can't make it in the cigar industry anymore. You can't start a company and have it be successful anymore. Those days are over. It can't mm. be done. When I hear that, uh, that I hear, I'm going to prove them wrong. That's, that's, that's the way I, I'm a very competitive person. So when somebody says it can't be done, what are you doing? You're crazy. Don't do this. You're going to waste a lot of time and money and all this stuff. And, and there's, believe me, there's, there's, and, and by the way, if someone comes to me now and asks me about getting into this, I go, listen, you just want to think twice about this thing, think three times, five times. <laughs> I go, and you got to be well, you have to be well financed. You have to have finance, the financial ability to, to literally pump money in for the first four or five years. You just have to, or else forget it. Um, <clears throat> so that's one of the reasons that I, that I decided to start my own company after the first partnership didn't work out. But, but on top of that, going back to what you just said and, and, and hanging out at the lounges and so forth, you know, <clears throat> cigars 
are the great unifier. I can sit in Churchill's Lounge or in under. I go to the underground, and I love those guys. I mean, I do. They do a lot of business with me, and I and that's and I love them personally. Uh, and uh, you know, I I talk with them. I, can, I interact with a lot of the customers regularly, not just when we're doing events. Um, and, 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 but I walk in there and, and I'm not dressed like that today, Joe, but you know me, I dress in a, in like, I'll have a nice blazer on or a jacket and, you know, and your little, I, I uh, uh, scoff, not scoff. What is that called? Pocket Hank square. Chair. I got a pocket, pocket square, you know, yeah. <laughs> so I dress a certain way when I'm out in public, uh, doing things I'm at home and there's not a lot of dry cleaners around. So I'm down to like shirts I haven't worn in five years, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but <clears throat> But, you know, I walk into the underground the way I walk in everywhere. Jacket, pocket square. And if you, when I walk in like that, I stick out like a sore thumb there. But it doesn't matter. We're all the same. <clears throat> we, you can have a multimillionaire or a billionaire sitting here. And you can have a, a, a guy who just got out of college and just likes to smoke a cigar once in a while and doesn't have a lot of money, but he wants to enjoy the camaraderie here. And you have everything in between. And it brings us together and we're all the same, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's an incredible unifier. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I've walked down the street smoking a cigar and someone randomly says, hey, where'd you get that cigar? What are you smoking? I don't know these people, and then, but it's the cigar. They want to know about the cigar. What are you, what are you smoking? And then I, I'll tell them and all, you know, and, and all that stuff. So it's, it's, it is a tremendous unifier. It's a tremendous um, uh, lifestyle. It's about the lifestyle more than it is the cigar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, a, you know, it's like the story on how I met Drew. It's like it was weird, right? It was like he, he I was talking about Bloody Marys, which I always pair a cigar with Bloody Marys when I'm in studio, right? And, uh, you know, and then so Drew just started tagging me in, hey, I'm having a Bloody Mary and a cigar, blah, blah. And then, like, we're, we're like, now we're, we're, oh, we were in the process of this year organizing a trip for me to actually get down and, 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 and meet him and, and do that. And then, he, and then in the process, he came on as a co host. It's like you just meet so many cool people. Because of cigars, it's like my, my no list doubt. goes on, you know, it's crazy. And, and, and if my list goes on, your list must be even bigger because you branch out and, and you actually have, have a blend, you know, as opposed to just a right. no, podcast, it, it, you know, <laughs> it's amazing. One of, one of the, I, I've always had a mental block when it comes to remembering people's names all my mm -hmm. life. I don't know why. Uh, and, but I never forget a face. Mm -hmm. So I'll be doing an event somewhere and someone will come up and say, Hey Mike, how you doing? I mean, I haven't seen you in a year or whatever. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, Oh shit, I don't know this guy's name. <laughs> I, I'm like, so, you know, but then I'll, I'll, you know, I'll figure it out after a little while or I'll, you know, so I always feel bad about that, but I meet so many people. I meet so many great people. And a lot of them I consider very close friends of mine at this point. Uh, and then, and, and um, we have, a, we have, a, we have a, a great connection because of this. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's really, it's really quite awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping things on an awesome note before we break off and, and start talking <laughs> yeah. COVID and stuff like that. Uh, what goes on in your head when you're creating a blend, right? Cause obviously it's, you know, you have to think of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. if I like the taste, sure. Would my consumers like to taste like what goes on, like you said, you're smoking a test blend. Like, take us through yeah. that creative process as to like what you aim for in each of your smokes. So, my blending process has changed dramatically over the years. Um, oh, when I sure. first got in this industry, I didn't know how to get out my own, get out of my own way when it came to blending a cigar. Right? I, 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 I was a cigar lover, but to blend a cigar. Just because you love cigars doesn't mean you know how to blend with cigars. I love wine, but I can't make wine either, right? I love to <laughs> eat great food, but I'm a terrible cook. So, so you know, it, 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 I had no knowledge, really, of how to properly blend a cigar or even the process, really, that it, you went through to do it. So when we went down to my father's cigars to blend the, the first two uh, blends I ever did, which were the El Teante cigars, the blue, the, the Rosado and the Oscuro, um, I learned so I, I was really there as a student listening to a master, Don Pepin Garcia, talk about how we're going to blend the cigars and Jaime was involved. And at the time there was a gentleman named John Gonzalez who 
Um, I don't, I think he's still in the industry with somebody new now, but he's been, he's been at a few different places since, but these people actually took us in and, and really, I learned a lot from them. Um, so the way we blended that cigar is we basically went down and I said to the master, Don Papin, I said, I want a cigar that tastes like this, right? I want, this is what, these are the characteristics I want. And then he made it, uh, and nailed it pretty quickly, by the way. So, um, that was he really blended that cigar with my approval. If that's mm-hmm. a, you know, if that's a, the, I didn't really go in and say I want to use this binder, this filler, and this wrapper, and let's put it together and let's see how it goes. It was I want a cigar that tastes like this, that has these characteristics. Can you make it? He made it. I approved it. It was a great cigar. So then, fast forward, I uh, a couple of years later, I start my own company. I'm going. I'm down at the Quesada Cigars Factory in Santiago, Dominican Republic. I'm sitting in Manuel Quesada's office and I'm actually now pinching myself because I'm now sitting down talking about blending a cigar with the second uh, cigar legend in, that I, that I worked with in the industry. And I'm thinking, why am I, why am I getting this opportunity? Right? So mm. I, I sit there and I said, well, it was sort of a hybrid. I said, I want a cigar that meets these characteristics. And I said, educate me on what tobaccos you have readily available and, or can get easily so that we can accomplish that. And then he said, well, we have this and this and this, and let me show you this. And, and we can't, we put our heads together and we came up with the Imperia blend. Uh, and then I did, uh, the next year I did the East Laurel. Um, and that blending process was actually, uh, an interesting one because I, I actually had something in my head. I, I had, I went and worked with them. I said, I want to use this. I had a particular wrapper I wanted to use and, uh, they sent me test blends. They weren't working. And they finally said, you need to fly down here. We need to sit here and do this in the factory. So I flew down to Santiago. Hmm. I walk into their conference room. And in their conference room is a tray with four different test blends. Clearly, none of which had the wrapper that I asked them to use. So I said to Hostos Quesada, who was running the factory at that time for Quesada Cigars, I said, Hostos, are those my cigars? He goes, yep. I go, it's the wrong wrapper. He goes, we couldn't make the cigar you wanted to make using that wrapper. Try these and tell us what you think. And at the time when I wanted to use that other wrapper, I was actually blending the cigar that became the Aventador. Uh, and then I smoked this one and I said, okay, we're on to something. Let's t- we tweaked it a little bit. And I said, we're going to put the Aventador on the back burner. We're going to release the East Laurel because the East Laurel always in my head was going to be a stronger cigar. And that's what these were. So um, I, I came up with the East Laurel really by accident. I mean, I, I wasn't even working on that. And, I, and then I went back and did the Aventador with a completely different wrapper uh, than I originally wanted to use. So now fast forward to, to making the Ehrlich blends. Um, the original Ehrlich has, is a mostly Nicaraguan blend with a Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper uh, and a touch of Dominican tobaccos in the filler from La, the La Canela region uh, for balance. Uh, and that cigar is kind of a, the spiciest of my cigars, if, if that makes sense. It's a little bit peppery, really unique cigar. Uh, and then I wanted to make the PLM. So I'm working with Ernesto Carrillo on the PLM series, which is by far my most successful release I've had. Uh, and so I, I make the PLM and I'm blending it with him and he's sending me test blends and they're not working. And this is, this is a blend where I'm saying, well, let's try this. And he goes, well, no, let's try this. And five, six, seven, eight, ten blends, and they're not working. So mm. finally I said to him, I said, you know, I have an idea. I think we're overthinking this and making this more complicated than it needs to be. Take the original Ehrlich blend and switch the wrapper to a San Andreas Maduro. That's all I want you to do. And he goes, huh. He goes, we could try it. And he wasn't really confident, or at least he <laughs> didn't sound confident at the time. Sure. So he, yeah, yeah. He, he gets me the test blends, and they, it was really great cigar. And we just did some minor tweaks to the ratio in the bind and the filler tobaccos. And that became the PLM, which is by far my uh, most successful release. These days I have more to do with the blending than I ever did, but I still don't, I still don't ignore the experts, right? Uh, these folks, you know, the folks like I'm working with Aganors on a few things right now, they know more about tobacco than I'll ever know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm going to listen to them. I mean, if it, it, you know, th- they are going to guide me but I will have more input on the blends than, than I used to have for mm. sure. So it sounds like you utilize your resources, you know, enough in business mm-hmm. to say, all right, even though I want this, this seems to be a better solution. 
I'm engaging in the in with this and uh, with, with 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 these people who know a little bit more than I do, but together we're collaborating and making a fantastic product. So we should move exactly. forward. That's very that's very yeah, good exactly life right. lesson. So, that's very good I mean, life that, lesson. That's true and now. In life, yeah, exactly. That is a life lesson. I mean, it is. I, you know, you, you keep to your strengths and you hire other people to take care of the weaknesses you have, right? Mm-hmm. If, and, and the cost of hiring those people to take care of those weaknesses is less than the cost you'll incur if you try to handle your weaknesses on your own. So you have to recognize what you're strong at and what you're weak at, and you have to get help on the stuff you're weak at, right? And if somebody is a true expert um, in the field, why wouldn't you listen to them? I mean, sure. why, why yeah. would I, why would I ignore Manuel Quesada or Ernesto Carrillo or <laughs> Don Pepin Garcia or right. Eduardo Fernandez? Why would I, why would I ignore what they have to say? I mm. have to listen to them. I mean, be, I'd be foolish not to. And I've used that in my business life across the board. Mm. I mean, it, uh, it's, it's, uh, I had a, I, when I played basketball, uh, I, my, my, the greatest coach I ever played for was my high school coach. And my high school coach used to, every, at least once a practice, say, keep to your strengths and stay away from your weaknesses. If you're not a good ball handler, pass the ball to somebody who's a good ball handler. Don't try to be a ball handler. Right? If you're not a good post player, don't post up. Play mm-hmm. on the wing. I mean, it's very simple. If you're not a good shooter, don't take jump shots. Drive to the basket. Right? Same thing in life. You've got to recognize where you're strong. You take care of that stuff, and you outsource the rest. That's why I love talking to you. I get so pumped up. I should call you every morning at five thirty in the morning and have like like yeah, fireside chat. <laughs> I'll probably still be intoxicated at five thirty in the morning. You well, me? you know, well, I have a little one, so five thirty is pretty common. You know. Yeah. Well, I don't, so it's not common for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, to be honest with you, I'm up early. I'm I've been sleeping later lately than I normally do. I'm usually up by six thirty in the morning. Uh, mm-hmm. Now I'm sleeping till seven thirty, eight o'clock sometimes because I, I got nowhere to go. You don't have a commute, right? right. You don't have a commute. You know? I, yeah, the commute is I walk downstairs, I go into the <laughs> kitchen, I make coffee. Uh, you know, I go into my office. I have an office in my house. I go into the office. I do my thing. I, you know, maybe catch up on some news and do some research. And, uh, and 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 when I have to, when I do things like this, I go in my cigar room, and which is where I'm at now, and and hang out and smoke a cigar. There you go. There you go, Drew. Give us some questions. What do, what do you want to talk to Mike about? Yeah, just uh, well, first of all, Mike, Mike, I haven't had any of your anything in your line yet. Uh, well, are you serious? The hell, are you I'm waiting serious. for? I know. What the I hell know. are you? You live in the underground. What are you doing? I, <laughs> well, because you know, by the time I get down there, it's always uh, I get caught up in conversation, and next thing I know, I forgot my list, and I walk out of there with things that uh, uh, Don has like. Put it in my hands and say, "Here, <laughs> here you go. Get these." Yeah, try going. this. Listen. Go yeah. down there before they're gone. There's not many left. I made a cigar for that <laughs> event I did on the 14th with Aganor, so called the Greedy Little Bastards. Okay. It's got a cartoon. It's got a cartoon of me and Mark Scott on it. It's pretty funny, but it's a Lancero, and it is. I did it with Aganor, and it is awesome. I, it's an not- awesome cigar, but they're the only store that has it. Uh, that that was my next question. I never heard of it, so it's, it has to be an exclusive. So yeah. Yeah, I got so I made a cigar oh, yeah. for them. So last year they did a, a series of cigars based on the Seven Deadly Sins, uh, yep. you know, greed and and uh, sloth um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. The sloth and all you know all that stuff, right? <laughs> so yeah. they gave me greed because of my Wall Street background. So I did a greed a good cigar <laughs> called Greed for them, and uh, they the cigar was so well received, and that was also done with Aganorsa. It was a six by fifty two Toro that I did originally. And I said, you know, Don, I always make you a special cigar for this big event in March. What if I did the, the greed cigar on the Lancero? He goes, absolutely. We'll do it. So yeah. I did the greed cigar on the Lancero also with Aganorsa and the Toro was awesome. The Lancero was unbelievable. It was off the charts. It's an off the chart cigar. You got Drew, you got to go get some. I'm telling no, you. I got to go. I, mean, I, I got to go. Um, I got to call on the ground and, and get a shipment. I've been chasing some of the uh, uh, the Noel Rojas stuff over there too. I gotta I gotta call Gee. and get him to ship me some stuff for sure. So Noel's the <laughs> guy I've talked to actually. He, he's a, he's a relatively uh, he's becoming more and more known. He's doing a great mm-hmm. job with the rebranding of his company and all that stuff. Mm. He's made great cigars as long as I've known him, but but he was very local and not very well known. Um, 
he's a guy I would make a cigar with. And I've actually talked to him loosely about that too. Um, I would do that with him. He's very good. You got to give him a call, Mike, and tell him to come on Stogie Geeks. I I, I want to interview him because I because we interviewed he, him once. Have you guys asked him? He would do it. Joe, no, no. I we, already, yeah, Joe, Joe. I already told. I already told you. He already told me just come down to his uh, factory, which is about 15, 20 minutes from my house, and we could do something there from his factory. But yeah, I talking with Noel. I mean, I you know yeah. he, he talked he talked about Mike about doing some collaborations with Mike and a couple of other fellows and you know but uh, you know. In, in, that, in, that, in that conversation we had, he's like, Drew, just come on down here to my factory. We can do it right here. And, uh, you know, so that's already on the books. I think once this COVID-19, uh, you know, gets over Releases. the hump. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Because I, I like, you know, uh, Drew sent me a care package, Mike, from some stuff that that uh, um, he can get that I can't get because of the regions and all that stuff. Uh, right. and, and I'm like, dude, what are these are awesome. I'm like, Oh my, I like texted them. They were I'm like, I'm, yeah, the, was blue the, blue, the blue, the blue bonnets. Yeah. I'm like, Oh my oh, that's, God. That's like, black, I'm like in love with this black guy. Label, isn't it? Who makes no, blue bonnet? Bonnet. no, that's, that's Noel oh. Rojas. That's him. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Blue mm -hmm. bonnets. And then, uh, uh, the other, uh, the statement, which I, I've been hoarding mm -hmm. to myself and I only have one left. <laughs> so I'm not sharing that with anybody. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, definitely. I'm somebody, text, was just uh, posting, somebody was just posting smoking a Lancero that he made recently. Yeah. Mm. Just I today I saw the post, actually. Oh, okay. uh, so, I, I I mean, I, that's a cigar I would love to try. Yeah, yeah the KSG. Uh, it's his new KSG uh, line that he's coming out with, uh, which stands for King of Small that's Gages. What it, that's what it was. It, it, it mm. was that in a Lancero. Yes, the King of Small Gage uh, is what that KSG stands for. Uh and then, uh, but I'm going to text Stacy. I don't know if you know Stacy, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm going to text him and have him hook me up with uh, Don's number. I'll, I'll, I'll get your cigars tomorrow. <laughs> Good answer. Get those, That's what I like about you. They you always five packs. They come in five pack bundles. The, the greedy little bastard. They're awesome. I'm telling you. All right. That's cool. awesome. Yeah. Other than that, Definitely. I mean, my other question is so, I mean, and you kind of already talked about it, but just coming into the, uh, you know the blending process with uh, with uh, Manuel and uh, uh, per, uh, Carrillo uh, on the. You uh, say that way the, better than I can. <laughs> uh, so uh, Carrillo, uh, just reading about the David uh, the David Erlach line. Is that the right? Is that correct? Yeah, David P. Erlach. Yep. Erlach. David yeah, P. Erlach. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Tremont. That's yep. the original. The original is the Dave Taylor yep. Tremont, Tremont, and that's uh, that's the one with the Ecuador Sumatra wrapper. Okay, yeah, I gotta get my hands on that now. Yeah, because I'm a big fan of of the wrapper, you know, of the Mexican San Andreas wrappers myself. <laughs> so when you were saying that earlier, and I was like, man, that would have been I, I, you know, to see that now in the PLM series, uh, definitely gotta get some of those as well because I, I just love the full body strength. I mean, I, I, I get a lot of stuff from Skip Martin and uh, uh, Steve Saka. And I mean, I love their stuff as far as their uh, their, their uh, heavy uh, heavy full body smokes and the and the and just the, right. the smoke content out of those cigars. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to definitely getting some of yours in my hands here in the next 24 hours. And yeah, so, and, and, so my cigars, my five blends are all all five of them are different from each other, which yeah. is one of the other things to go back to what Joe asked earlier, which is how what's my blending sort of mindset. When I come yeah. out with a sixth blend, I don't want it to be like the other five. I want it to be its own blend. And my goal is to have a cigar, eventually I have a cigar for, for everybody, right? Mm. So yeah. none of my cigars are actually kick you in the teeth strong. None of them. Uh, they're, they're very refined. Even even the Eastlo, which is probably my strongest cigar, is not. it doesn't punch you in the mouth. It's, it's, it's a refined strength. Uh, and I, mm. I like to blend cigars that are very balanced uh, yes. and are very complex and flavorful. But I don't like strong cigars that just kick you in the teeth and they don't do much of anything else. I like if I'm going to smoke a strong cigar, it's got to have a lot of complex flavor and it's got to yes. it's got to really uh, please the palate rather than just hit me with strength. Um, there are some companies that do that and sell very well. It's just not my yeah. philosophy. So when you smoke my cigars, uh, Drew, for the first time, you're going to notice they're not even the stronger ones like the Esau are not kick you in the teeth. They're not very 
um, out front with the strength, although although that is a pretty strong cigar. Having smoked uh, all of your stuff that was readily available here and not any of the shop exclusive stuff, one of the characteristics I notice of all of your um, lines or skews, right, is mm-hmm. that the smoke content and the um, taste, uh, especially coming from the wrapper portion of it, tends to linger on my palate. Like, we're talking for a while. Like, I can smoke your cigar, and I'm smoking your uh, Islero Futador size now. And and one of the things mm-hmm. I notice is that it just it just lingers on your palate. And the PLM series yeah, I... by David Pierlick, uh there really lingers on your palate there, in a good way. It just It's not like yeah. one of those sticks that you have to get the flavor, whether you retrohale or not. You're, 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 you're like searching for that flavor. That flavor stays with you f- for a while. Yeah, At least- that's, that's, you know, Manuel Quesada taught me something early on. And he said, you know, we, we don't blend cigars for intense strength. We blend cigars for intense flavor. Mm, for sure. And whatever, yeah. the strength, whatever the strength ends up becoming is what it becomes. But we're we're after flavor, not strength, not so. That's where that comes from. If you if you smoke the original Imperia with the blue label, blue band, that wrapper is a very unique wrapper. It's a high higher priming uh, of the uh, of a, a Dominican HVA variety, which that means that that wrapper really hits the palate hard and really lingers. Uh, but it gives a very unique. Uh, flavor profile too. Um, the wrappers, uh, you know, on the Ehrlich, uh, you've got uh, you've got the Sumatra wrapper, which is really where Carrillo made his name back in the '90s with La Gloria Cubana. He was like the king of Sumatra wrappers. He was one of the first to really use that widely. Uh, so we wanted to go to his strength with the first release, and then the San Andreas wrapper. To me, just just any San Andreas uh, cigar is going to have a very distinct flavor. Like that wrapper to me really has a robust, robust flavor impact on, on the blend. Uh, so you, you it, almost like a cocoa type sweetness along with some strength. So it's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite wrappers actually. Some of my, I, I go back and I look at my humidor that's, that's here in the room and, and, and the cigars that aren't mine, a lot of them have San Andreas Maduro wrappers on it. So clearly I like the wrapper. Right. right. So it's um, it's 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 what to me one of the best rappers out there. Now that I know people that just don't like San Andreas, and yep. you know there are people that say I love the Ehrlich, but I don't like the APL because I don't like San Andreas. Mm. That's okay. You know, yeah. it, it, you know, it, people people are all. I don't expect everyone to like every one of my cigars. In fact, there's nobody that's ever made a cigar that everyone likes, ever. Uh, right. So so you, you, you know it's it's like. If you don't like one of my cigars, you don't like three of my cigars, or if maybe you don't like any of my cigars, that's okay. I don't ever get offended because I can't hit every palate yet. My goal is to have enough different blends so I do with at least one of my cigars hit every palate. That's the goal. That's a super cool goal. <laughs> Definitely. So when so I guess the last is you're gonna go really light, right? I'm actually like, um like or are I'm you looking at on like com- going at like a complex, because complex Connecticut's is starting to become a well, that's thing. What I'm working on. I'm actually working on exactly that kind of blend right now. It's actually okay. pretty much done uh, with Agonorsa. Yeah, well, your timing is perfect because, because co- complex Connecticut's are a thing. I've been saying that since since mid-2018 here on Stogie Geeks, like, and, and yeah. I've been getting into them, too. I've been backpedaling off of the, I want Nicaraguan pepper, and I want in-your-face strength, and all of that. I've been backpedaling. Right. And into the taste, like I've been really smoking stuff for 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 taste, you know. Especially now you know, it's, with with COVID, I don't like you know I, I don't like boring cigars, right? And yeah. and I don't. And to me, most Connecticut cigars are fairly boring. That's just mm. me. I mean, that doesn't mean they're bad cigars. But if you go back to the uh, the, uh, the Connecticut cigars that were made back in the you know eighties, nineties, uh, to me they're they're good, but they're just kind of flat. Mm, it's yeah. like it's, they, it's they don't, like they don't, yeah. yeah. Right. So, so I, when I smoke a, a Connecticut cigar, I want it to have character. I want it to have complexity and I want it to have a lot of flavor. Um, and so there are a few out there that I really love, which inspired me to want to make one like that, that, that is 
a Connecticut cigar that will hit the mild to medium cigar smokers palate. But also when they smoke it, they go, wow, this is this is not a big fat cigarette. This is actually a really good cigar. And that's that's kind of how I, I, I perceived yeah. Connecticut cigars for many years, that they're just big cigarettes. They don't taste. And, and by the way, the first premium cigar I ever smoked was an Ashton Classic Churchill. Mm. And it, it's what got me into the into loving cigars. So I'm not saying they're bad cigars, but my my palate is such that it's evolved to the point where once you I need to have the cigars have a tremendous amount of flavor. I want them to be when you smoke and when you take that smoke in, it really hits a lot of your palate very, very well. And it's very complex. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So well, complex that, Connecticut what, is coming soon. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the way I was. That's the way I was too. When I first got introduced to some of the Connecticut blends, I was like, man, they're okay. They're big, but the flavor there was just lacking. And then, and then came across Mr. Uh, Saka with his uh, um, Sobra Mesa. Sobra Mesa. And, yeah. Sobra Mesa. Oh, my yeah. gosh. And then, and then I started to understand what he was doing. And I'm thinking, man, you know, if, if a lot of these Connecticut cigars came out more with the complexity he had but still have balance, you're going to have a home run in, the, in, a, in, a, in a Connecticut um, wrapper at any time of the day. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that because, uh, as my friends who are now getting into the cigars with me, I'm 51. I just turned 51 last week, but I you look I've great been smoking. For 60. <laughs> I've been uh, I've been smoking cigars Listen, off and on since I, I'm since younger 90. than you are, which is probably shocking to everyone watching right now. I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> Wall Street yeah. and cigars will age you in dog years. <laughs> Drew, you finish go. your thought. <laughs> no, no, no. What I was saying, what I was going to say, and, you know, a lot of my, you know, a lot of my friends who are now coming into the, you know, they always ask me, you know, why do you smoke cigars? What is it about it that you like about it? And, of course, like I tell them, it's always, you know, the stick is a great equalizer when you walk into a lounge uh, full of strangers. And then the next thing you know, you, people start asking, what are you smoking? And then and then that, that conversation just starts all the way around the room. And then they start talking about the cigar you're smoking, about what their likes and dislikes about it were. And you start to become, you know, basically a student in that lounge. And then after a while, you become the uh, teacher, <laughs> you know, the educator uh, with other, uh, like with my friends who are now just getting into the cigar uh, uh, uh hobby i guess you want to call it i don't want to call it an uh you know uh, an addiction or what have you uh but it's 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 more you know relaxation great camaraderie talk talking and learning and speaking and just you know just learning about the sticks itself learning about the size you get to explore yeah and and so yeah so with that you know as i tell them you know connecticut blends you know if you're going to start you know with a cigar start something in a lighter uh, but yet get some complexity in there, you know, start to develop your palate to what you like. And then from there, start graduating and, and don't be afraid to try some of these, you know, like the Neanderthal. That's that's, you know, I, I got to call Skip because I'm, I'm out of <laughs> I'm out of them. I got one left. And so and I, I like those heavy Lajero sticks. But at the same time, it's refreshing to go back to a Connecticut blend or a, a sort of Florida sun grown mm-hmm. and just kind of start learning and developing your my palate to those cigars. Yeah, w- yeah, one of my favorite uh, pairings to, uh, in terms of beverages with cigars is actually coffee or espresso. You can see I've been drinking a double espresso. It's empty right now, but for this, because it's we started this at one o'clock, and I mean, even I have I have to you know pace myself. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, I decided to make a double espresso for this for this uh, broadcast. And to me, one of the most enjoyable cigars I ever have is the first one of the day with a coffee. And mm-hmm. if you have a complex Connecticut or complex milder cigar that may, may or may not have a Connecticut wrapper on it, sure. um, then to me, that pairing is just unbelievable. It, it's, mm. a, it's so enjoyable. Like, I'll give you a couple that I really love. Uh, I love the Matilde. And, and Joe, you know that uh, my distribution company I own alongside uh, Enrique Sejas, who makes Matilde, and we distribute together. Right. Uh, and so... Uh, he has. A, he came out with a cigar in 2017 called the um, Serena, and yeah. he handed it to me at the trade show. and And I said, "Well, I'm going to smoke this tomorrow because I'd already had like seven or eight cigars that day." And I'm like, "It looks very mild. It's it's probably a milder cigar." But I have a first thing in the morning. 
uh, when my palate's clean with my coffee. The next morning, I lit that cigar and I walked up to him. I go, Enrique, this is the best cigar you've ever made. It, it, it's, it, it's one of my favorite cigars. Um, and with coffee, that thing is on point. The other one, which isn't actually a Connecticut wrapped cigar, is the Aladino, the original Aladino. That's a 100% Corojo cigar, but, mm-hmm. but that, it's a very light Connecticut looking Corojo wrapper. And that's a mild mm-hmm. to medium cigar, but a lot of character. That's a great cigar. It is. Um, so I've grown to like milder and medi- mild to medium cigars more because people are getting creative with them and they're, they're not boring. They're making them with a lot of character and a lot of complexity, and that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been super excited about some of these complex Connecticut's that are that are coming out. Uh, there, mm-hmm. it's, 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 refre- it's refreshing to my, to my palate to, to enjoy. And first thing in the morning with the coffee is, is the way to go for sure. When I, when in the glory days pre-COVID, when I used to go into studio, I go into studio and I open up my computer, and by the time it catches up with the Wi-Fi and and location and all of that stuff. I walk over to the espresso machine, make an espresso, go into Paul's humidor, rate it, and uh, you know, grab something. With you know, the I gotta start again. doing that when COVID shuts down. I want to go into Paul's humidor and rate it too. <laughs> I've been banned from, the, <laughs> like been banned from the studio. You know, it's it's like it's like now it's like I'm walking around with my little Church Hills leather pouch and I'm getting the cigars I need for the day and I'm just like, oh my god, this is how like the regular people are. Like I don't like this song, know. You, know? <laughs> I, you know. Listen, I'm used to I, walking. I told you, I'm getting nervous about about my own supply of my own cigars right now here because I can't. I can't get them. Mm, they're, they're in they're in the Dominican and the and the warehouse is shut down. We got nobody working there, so so it's like I can't get them. So I I filled some orders with the stock I normally have at my house, and I'm low. I got maybe four or five boxes of cigars left, and they're not really the size I normally smoke. Like I got a bunch of Gordos and stuff like that, but you know, so I'm kind of rationing myself. And I've been going to other company cigars that I've sort of held on to for a long time. And I've really grown to say, you know, I don't know why I stopped smoking this. I haven't smoked this in a while. I should be smoking this more often because uh, mm. there's a lot of great cigars out there. Yeah. 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 Uh, that reminds me of my pomade story. I ordered pomade uh, I can't wait four, to weeks, hear this. four weeks ago and freaking the Amazon. Hair pomade? Amazon. Like hair? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the pomade for the hair and like it's taken five weeks to ship. And I'm like, are you kidding <laughs> well, me? I mean. so, so I'm like, all right. So like, you know. Uh, Thursday is when I start to do my hair, right? And then, like, Friday, Monday I wear a hat. Tuesday I wear a hat. And then, you know, because I'm, like, rationing out the pot, mate. You know what I mean? Because it comes you from know, Michigan. And, and That's look, a long story. I, I've, well, seen, well, I've seen you in person an awful lot, you know, yeah. right? You yeah. must you must order pomade by a pallet load, right? <laughs> I, I, I I do, man. I do. It's it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking that I've seen your hair. There's a lot going on there. There's a lot there of stuff is. in there. There is. There is. And and <laughs> and my son, people will follow me like, oh my god, your son's got a gorgeous head of hair. I was like, yeah, that's what my hair looks like. If I freaking took all the shit out of it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know. Be I haven't said curly. This to you. I haven't said this to you yet on this broadcast, Joe, but it's a good thing your son looks like your wife's side of the family because that is a good looking kid. I got to yeah. tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, you that know what's funny? Good, the the, the last kid. time I interviewed you um, was on Stogie Geek, so that wasn't my last show. There, there, there's an ongoing in, in joke studio, right? That what? Yeah, I was in studio. You were in studio. Uh, K- yeah, I was yeah. in studio. It was it was August, and Caden was about to be born in two weeks. We were, you know. Uh, two weeks or so uh and whatnot and 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 you were like oh god i can't and that was 19 months ago it's crazy how that time flies it is crazy you know i look back my company is seven years old right it's like it flew by how did that happen you know i had more i i didn't have quite the big forehead that i have now and my hair was a little darker Mm. (laughs) i mean you know and and I've got I got I got problems here. I've got I've got to get a cut going soon. I mean I'm I'm doing what I can with this mop, but it's got to be fixed soon. No way, man. Let it grow. Throw some pomade in it and raise it high, higher to here, closer to God. <laughs> Is that your theory? I- yeah, I think I think I think you should go for it, Mike. You should walk around. Listen, and, the like, problem like, is, I used to my hair used to go to the side, but I can't yeah. do that anymore because I got an issue right in this area that you can't see on camera. That there's less and less <laughs> hair every day, so I have, I'm doing actually like a, a sort of comb over where I'm going from the front to back, 
Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and and so I'm just gonna let this thing grow. I got another month, I figure, before I can even get a haircut. So I'm just gonna let it grow, and we're gonna see how it works out. I've never grown it this for this long. I think you should. And if you need some pomade, uh, I can I can ship you some. I I have. I have different levels of pomade, actually, you can use. For, for, for you know what's crazy? So my wife was going to Walmart today to pick up some things, and and, and I, I asked her to get me. I use, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's it's like, it's not pomade. It's actually, a, it's not as thick as pomade, but I use the same, I put it in there. It's yeah. been out for like a month. Like, are people hoarding toilet paper and hair product now? What's yes, going on? The, yeah, oh, it's yeah. crazy. I, I call, like, like, I get mine from, uh, uh, it's a pomade factory in 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 Michigan. Of course you and, do. Of right? course you and, do. And, and yeah, and 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 they make small batches, and they're like, you know, How we're in the middle find of like a pomade uh, factory in Michigan to get their pomade from. How does that happen? To walk me through that. How did you find this place to get? You're ordering pomade from Michigan. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's um, you know, it's crazy. And then the, you you go with like a certain oil based pomade and all of that type stuff. And yeah, Listen it's crazy. To this. It's yeah. telling you the beauty story. secrets with Joe Hozempa. <laughs> well, uh, New oh. podcast. Oh, I got a, I got a note. Hold on, I got a note from you. Uh -oh. Uh, uh, oh, you could, <laughs> you can use Crisco if you if you run out of pomade, Mike. <laughs> Who said that, Uncle Stevie? Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Rumor has it. Rumor has it. Listen, yeah, you can use Crisco. Whoever that happens to be that's there, just tell him I said hi and I miss him. Uh, I will. I will. He says hi and he misses you. He hopes to give you a hug someday or a social distance bump or whatever the hell we're going to be allowed to do. Yeah, I don't you know, know what we're doing. Apparently, handshaking's yep. out. That's gone. Apparently, handshaking's I mean, out. Do the fist bump. I'm going. You know. I'm going. To f I'm going full full Asian. I'm just going to start bowing to people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It might, it might, I don't know. It's it's just. It's ludicrous, right? It's ludicrous. Uh, well, what what we're going we're through and the methodology, it's just all ludicrous. You know, there's, oh, there's just, actually almost like an airy sort of horror movie type of feel when you go outside these days. Mm. Um, you know, I have, an, I have an office up in Braintree, Mass., which is about just under 20 minutes from my house. And I'm considered an essential worker because I'm still involved in the finance industry and finance em employees are essential. So yeah. I have my letter in my car and I can drive wherever I want to drive, right? <laughs> Um, and I, if, when I would go into that office, um, before, you know, it, it's 20 minutes with, it's about 17 minutes without traffic, it, but it could take me an hour, right? Mm -hmm. the traffic, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. It's, it's really crazy. The traffic to get to going towards Boston when it's rush hour. Now I could drive anywhere. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It's like, yeah. it, 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 it it's scary. I don't like it. I used to complain about traffic. I want traffic again. Mm. I mean, I, I miss it. We so had to pick I. my daughter up <laughs> in Savannah because she was going to Savannah College of Art and Design, and they shut down their school and all that stuff. And she's doing online classes at home now, and all you know, all the stuff that all the colleges are doing. And it was sort of like a, a rushed thing where we had to go down and get her. So, and we had to get all of her stuff. So we drove down to drive from here to Savannah. Uh, it took us, it should take us a lot longer than this, but we hit no traffic and we were there in 14 and a half hours. Wow. Straight through. Yeah. And that included, yeah. that included stopping for gas, lunch, you know, yeah. bathroom breaks, whatever. 14 and a half hours. It was yep. unbelievable. Yep. Savannah is a, at least a 19 hour drive. I drive down yeah. to Hilton Head I mean, every year. I drive down to Hilton Head and it's about 18, 17 and a half hours. So yeah. yeah and Savannah's about an yep. hour, not quite an yep. hour past that. Yep, absolutely. That's a fun town, Savannah, Georgia. That's what I would it like sure to is. do post COVID. Yeah. Mike, us reunited in Savannah, Georgia. That's a great town, man. Well, here's we what can I walk around, suggest. drinks have, in our hand, and everything. I mean, <laughs> they have one of the three. They're one of the three largest St. Patrick's Day parades in the world. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know this, but they are. It's basically it's Dublin and one of the four: Dublin, um, uh, Boston, uh, Savannah. And New Orleans, which New Orleans mm -hmm. always has big parties. So those are the four big ones. I'm sure there's some others as well that maybe are in that mix, but but uh, they canceled it this year. Uh, yeah. And we actually drove down on St. Patrick's Day to get my daughter. So we mm. get there, and Savannah wasn't shut down yet. Like they still had bars open, and there were. It wasn't as crowded as it normally be, but these bars were crowded. Uh, we went out to eat at a restaurant <clears throat> with my daughter, 
And there was people at the table. I mean, there was, there was a lot of people out. And when we, we went out with, uh, to get a drink afterwards and we didn't go into a bar, but in Savannah, you can walk around with open, it's open, open yep. containers fine. And there's, there's, there's like bars that you walk in and they're to go bars. You could order a drink yep. and then bring it outside with you. And that's what we did. Yeah. And, uh, and hung out with uh, the parents of uh, one of her college roommates. Uh, and it was, we're looking around and I'm going, wow. I mean, th- th- you would think nothing was going on in Savannah. Mm. Now, like, like they were having a party. It was a party mm. going on. And yeah. it was crazy. That's one hell of a <laughs> town, man. I love that town. It sure is. You know, it's fun. It's one. Uh, it's definitely is. Well, Mike, last time we interviewed you was 19 months ago. So please don't be a stranger to Stogie Geeks at all. Um, and hopefully Listen, when, I'm here when, whenever you want me. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. And 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 um, again, thank you for sponsoring me in the beginning and 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 everything that that you've done to allow me to be here. So uh, I really I really appreciate thank it you. from the bottom of my you've heart. You've been gracious to you me know? and I appreciate it. You know, uh, definitely. And I wish you much success with your future blends. And I can't wait to try them. And I'm going to try to get a hold of the underground. So tell him that if this pomade guy keeps friending him on Facebook uh, and from from New uh, from New uh, from the Northeast and and wants some cigars, it's me. So tell him I'll be contacting <laughs> there you him go. today. He'll send them to you. you know? I mean, they, they, yeah, yeah, I know he they, will. Yeah, can... yeah. They've been shipping so much product. He takes pictures oh. of all the boxes they pack oh, every yeah. day to yeah. ship out. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're, there's nothing like the underground. You got. I mean, it's such a unique place. I mean, Drew knows. It's. Oh yeah. Know, he, Drew mentioned Michaels. Michaels and Ulysses, right? Michaels yeah. and Ulysses is a great place, a tremendous place. I go there every time I'm in the the area. Um, oh, yeah. But they're but Michaels and Ulysses and the underground are com- diametrically opposed in terms of the atmosphere. <laughs> there's no doubt about that. There's nothing like yes. the underground. Awesome. Nothing like the underground, and I tell you, I'll tell you, I I, I like when uh, when Don posts his pictures of a uh, of the mail truck backing up, and it's yeah. just loaded up with a bunch of boxes, a lot of a lot of shipments going out, and you can just see the look in the on the uh, post uh, uh, person's face, like, what what is this? <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's crazy. They're used to it now. It I mean, they know oh, now. Yeah. I think they more or less just they take a truck there every day, just like a UPS yes. on a regular pickup. They're like the postal services. They're like every day going to pick stuff up. It's crazy. Well, that's good that he's able to keep his business going in this. It, it, it shows from a business standpoint that, you know, the more creative you get and the more products that you can get and the more customer following you can have for your brick and mortar, it's probably a good lesson to have, uh, especially. And, and I think that's going to be one of the big key changes to the retail industry, too. The, the brick and no mortars question. are all going to have a bigger online presence. There's no doubt yep. in my mind. They're yep. all, oh, yeah. They've all learned that you have to have an online presence so that if something like this happens, you can still maintain a semblance of your business. Yeah, I've been I've been saying that forever, both for businesses, both in and out of the industry, just saying mm-hmm. like you, you have to have an online presence. You have to move yeah. forward. And, and now it's again, it's how we began this interview. It's kind of forcing them uh, to to yeah. to get there faster, you know, so no definitely. doubt. And, and if I could if for anyone that's listening, uh, you know. Now is a time where you have to support your local retailers. Please go out. Yes. If you need cigars, go get them from your local retailers. They need it more than ever, um, we, you know, or else they're not going to be there. Uh, and so these, these are small mom and pop shops. They're not necessarily these massive companies with a lot of money. Uh, you know, go and support your local retailer. They're almost all of them are doing curbside or mail order or whatever they're allowed mm-hmm. to do in their particular jurisdiction. But please support them. They need it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stogie Geeks, we're going to take a quick break. Mike, I want to thank you for appearing on Stogie Geeks. I appreciate it always. Thank you very much for all of you have done thank you. For, for me personally and for getting me started. And I really appreciate that. Don't be a stranger to Stogie thank Geeks. Uh, any type of press release, please send it to us. Any product announcements there. And, um, you know, we will speak to you soon. So, you geeks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Drew and I are going to do Sticks of the Week. We will be right back. <laughs> 